So now coming to the decerebrate and decorticate rigidity. One of the most important questions that we have to remember. We have already seen all these tracks in the descending tracks, the lateral tracks and the medial tracks. Lateral, we have only two tracks, lateral corticospinal and red nucleus. Medial, I told you, the dominant tract is pons. Pontine is the dominant tract and pontine is going to be a positive stimulus. Pontine is going to give you a positive stimulus to the gamma extensors. Now, let's start with our lesions. First, we'll do our decorticate rigidity. So, one more point to be added here. Now, all these tracks will be under the influence of cortex. So, cortex, they, cortex, they will keep on inhibiting them and keeping them into control. Not only the particular track, the cortex will influence all the tracks. They are all under the influence of cortex. So, now, whenever this cortex is cut, it is called as a decorticate rigidity. How do we remember? Cortex is like a teacher in the class. So, cortex is keeping everybody calm. Suppose if cortex is cut, nobody is there to control. So, whatever is the action of the particular tract, the tract is going to do it in an exaggerated manner. That will be the reaction that is happening, going to happen here. So, let's try with our cortical lesion. So, we are cutting here. Decorticate is nothing but just cortex is taken out. So, this A, we will name this as A. This A is our decorticate lesion. Decorticate. Corticate means cortex we are taking out. Now, tell me what is, what all things are happening. Some of the tracks are cut. The corticospinal tracks are completely cut. Because they are coming from the cortex. If you take it, it will be completely cut. Now, coming to the lateral, now coming to the lateral tracks. Now, let's see in the lateral tract what is happening. The red nucleus, which was influenced by the cortex. Now, cortex is cut. So, what the red nucleus is, there is no damage in the red nucleus. So, what the red nucleus will do? This lesion is our D corticate. Now, what the red nucleus is going to do? The red nucleus is the alpha flexor. So, it is coming till the upper limb. So, what will happen to the alpha flexor now? Now, it will do its action more because nobody is controlling. So, there will be upper limb flexion. So, in D corticate, there will be upper limb flexion. Upper limb is flexed. Now, let's see the other track. I told you to remember one important track that is the pontine track. What is the function of pontine track? It is causing the extension gamma extensor and it is more dominant than the medullary reticulospinal, medullary reticulospinal tract. So, this red nucleus tract is called as rubrospinal tract. If I have said reticulo, it is wrong. It is rubro. Red is for rubrospinal tract. This rubrospinal tract. Rubro is the term used for red. Whereas, reticulospinal term is used for pontine and medullary reticulospinal tracts. This pons is the severe influencer of the gamma extensor. Now, I told you pons is a dominant tract. So, what will happen to the lower limb? Upper limb is already flexed by this tract. Now, this is coming till the lower limb. So, what will happen to the lower limb? The lower limb goes for extension. The lower limb goes for extension. So, this is what happens in case of a decorticate rigidity. Now, coming to the second lesion that is the decerebrate. Decerebrate is the lesion between superior and inferior colliculus. It is a lesion in the upper pons. So, what will happen now? Let's see. It is going to put a lesion here. I am going to put a lesion here. Now, pay attention to this B diagram, which is called as the decerebrate. Decerebrate, what has happened? The rubrospinal tract, which was coming from the red nucleus, that is also cut. What was the function of rubrospinal tract? It was flexing. Now, can, is there anybody to flex it? No. So, what will happen to the upper limb? The upper limb will go for extension. So, here in this lesion, the upper limb goes for extension. We will write it down again. Then coming to the pons, is the pontine tract intact now? See here, the lesion is here. Now, the lesion is here. Still, the pontine is intact. So, pons, what already it was doing? It was causing the lower limb extension. So, the lower limb goes for extension. So, what happens in decerebrate rigidity? Upper limb is also extended, lower limb is also extended. Now, let's summarize all our findings. In decorticate rigidity, what was happening? In decorticate rigidity, the upper limb was going for flexion because of the rubrospinal tract from the red nucleus is intact and the lower limb is going for extension. Whereas, in case of decerebrate rigidity, what was happening? The all four limbs were going for extension. Now, rubrospinal is also cut. So, all four limbs goes for extension. Don't worry about all these things. In your exam, just remember this one simple mnemonic, which is decerebrate. How many E's we have? 
we have one e here and another e here so there is two limb extension the lower limb two of the lower limbs are going for extension whereas upper limb is going for flexion calculate the number of e's in decerebrate one two three four four e's are there so four limbs has to go for extension so all four limbs goes for extension just remember the simple mnemonic that will be sufficient for you to address all the decorticate and decerebrate rigidity but if the question is asked which is the most important track that is differentiating between a decorticate and a decerebrate rigidity in a decorticate rigidity which track was preserved the rubrospinal track was preserved the rubrospinal track was preserved so this is the major difference between these two decerebrate and decorticate rigidity and there is one more additional thing which we can learn here the vestibulospinal tract it was causing the alpha extension alpha extension and very well whenever a cerebellum is cut the cerebellum was negatively influencing it so whenever the cerebellum is cut what will happen this extension can be exaggerated there will be exaggerated extensor response and there is one more thing about cerebellum there is one more thing about cerebellum we will discuss it here itself the cerebellum whatever happens what happens whenever cerebellum is cut there has been seen case of mild cases of hypotonia why this hypotonia is happening because from the motor cortex whenever any impulse is coming to the cerebellum what was happening this cerebellum is going to enhance it first if cerebellum is absent this initial enhancement will be lost so there were see they were seeing a slight hypotonia in case of cerebellum is cut so that we have to remember but the major point to remember is a decorticate and decerebrate rigidity and the features of them.